Hey guys, so it recently came up in one of my reverse dieting videos about um, GI discomfort and abdominal or GI problems in general and I wanted to make a quick short video uh, for you to help you understand um, what some of the common irritant foods are that can actually give you GI distress um, and kind of quickly break down for you what FODMAPS is. So uh, stick around and watch this video, um, it will just go through very basic um, FODMAP foods and uh, how you can go about implementing this into your diet so that you are uh, less symptomatic. So uh, FODMAPS um, is the uh, abbreviation or acronym um, used for a lot of uh, irritants that can give people uh, all the symptoms that I just mentioned. So uh, FODMAPS stands for fermentable oligosaccharides. Now oligosaccharides are a long chain sugar molecules which are uh, more difficult to be digested um, and broken down and used um, effectively by everybody. So people with a sensitive GI will have a more difficult time uh, processing these. Um, disaccharides is the D um, abbreviation and it's a short chain a sugar molecule. Uh, and then we have monosaccharides which are just single sugars and then P stands for polyols. So these are sugar alcohol molecules which again are more difficult to digest. So um, having a look at some of the food groups that actually um, can cause these kind of problems and I've just got a quick list up here for you but uh, certain fruits um, and fruit juices are known FODMAPs because they contain one of those uh, molecules that I've just mentioned. So um, the most common fruit would be pears and apples or any fruit in juice. So a lot of the canned fruits that you'll purchase, um, it might be that it's um, some kind of melon or a berry in a can but they're still, um, they're actually put into a pear juice and that is one of the known um, irritants. So just be mindful with things like that. Uh, a lot of dried fruit has a really high fructose uh, concentration. So when a food has a greater uh, concentration of fructose than it does glucose, uh, the absorption becomes more difficult. And again, you can start to have some of those symptoms. Um, Obviously things like uh, vegetables which have a high fructin content um, and mostly uh, the most common one is onion and garlic. So a lot of sauces contain onion and garlic and people don't even think, oh hey, I, I'm, I'm just eating this in the pasta sauce and they'll blame the carbohydrate sauce, like the, the actual pasta itself being uh, what's giving them symptoms when in actual fact uh, it's the onion or the garlic or the sauce that's actually being used uh, to make these things. So they're two of the vegetables that I would say uh, just keep an eye on um, with your intake and see if you can get any relief of symptoms because it does give you a lot of bloating. Um, some of the other ones are artichoke and asparagus. So uh, high amounts, say more than 50 grams in an, any one serve can kind of bring on those kind of symptoms. Uh, peanuts are actually another FODMAP, um, so if you're somebody that eats peanut butter or a crunchy peanut butter, maybe switch to an almond spread or like an almond or some other kind of nut that um, you still enjoy so that you can get the benefits of those micronutrients. Um, alcohol and caffeine are another two things that people tend to overlook, but they actually are irritants as well. So if you're somebody that's drinking a lot of white wine or you're having a high caffeine intake, um, these would be two things straight away, even before looking to those other things I just mentioned um, to try and reduce your intake um, because combined um, they could start to really have an accumulative effect and you reach your threshold pretty quickly. So um, maybe one or two of these in small amounts um, might be fine for you, but when you start adding them on top of each other, then you're starting to get an accumulation happening. Um, what else? Oh, sweeteners. So polyols is the final one uh, that I mentioned. So if you're having a lot of artificially sweetened products and carbonated drinks, um, not only will the carbonation cause you to get GI bloating and um, abdominal distension, but then the sweeteners that are used in them. And if you're having like protein bars, um, protein powders, what else? Ice creams with artificial sweeteners, yogurts with like sugar sweetened, um, flavoring agents and things like that. Again, if these are your go-tos because you're on low calories, well then you're probably gonna be finding you're pretty uncomfortable with such high intakes. So my uh, rule of thought when it comes to this is to completely eliminate these foods and then slowly reintroduce uh, each of these one at a time to work out if it's a problem for you. And then how much of this can I actually have before it becomes symptomatic? So. 
they're just a few of the things. I have a long, long list of foods and I actually give these kind of documents to clients when they're going into contest prep because a lot of the time you're starting to get really low calories, you start looking for foods that are very low calorie and then ob obviously they're going to have a lot of sweeteners and things like this. So, um, you know, people have ruined their contest prep because in the final week they change their food intakes or their food consumption and then all of a sudden they look really bloated. Um, they're really in a lot of pain and they're not able to train correctly. So they're just things to consider, um, you know, in general. And especially for a reverse diet when you're increasing your uh, volume of foods. Um, yeah, it definitely can start to take its toll if you're eating a lot more of these unknown uh, FODMAPs. So hopefully that has helped you. If you are interested in learning a little bit more, there's a lot of available literature about FODMAPs online. Um, but I can certainly help you as well. Okay guys, I really hope that that was uh, useful for you. Uh, I have worked in gastroenterology for quite a while with dietetics and I personally suffer from celiac disease and I have a wad of different GI conditions myself. So it's something that not only am I personally involved in, but I have helped many others uh, become symptom free. So if you would like uh, any more information, please email me. My email is hb at biolane.com and uh, yeah, let's get you feeling better.